Hi folks and welcome to Truck King. Today we're going to compare this Toyota Highlander with that Subaru Ascent and we'll do all the normal stuff like interior space, engine and drive experience, but first we want to focus in on the all-wheel drive system. Is Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive really that good or can this Toyota system keep up? We're going to find out by using those rollers right there. Let's jump into it. First, let's look at this Subaru Ascent and let's talk about Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive. That's a term that they throw around a ton in their marketing and I think there's still lots of folks who think, well, what the heck does that mean? Well, actually, the name is a pretty good description of the system. It is exactly symmetrical. If you were to kind of see the all-wheel drive system on a sheet of paper, you could draw a line down the center and it's identical on each side. There's no extra drive shafts that are coming out at a different angle and then the power is being sent back because everything's perfectly in a line, it keeps that power efficiency. And in an all-wheel drive system, that's important for fuel economy. You want to lose as little power as possible when you're transferring it to the rear. So this thing uses a multi-plate clutch to actually split the torque. Now, normal driving conditions, it's 60 in the front and 40 in the rear. That's the torque split. Now, the differentials on a Subaru are open differentials. So that means if one wheel slips, the other wheel won't won't actually receive very much power. However, Subaru has solved that with a system called VDC, Vehicle Dynamics Control. And what that does, it uses the brakes to be able to break the spinning wheel and to send the power back the other way. So in theory, we have our three rollers here. The rear passenger side tire is not on a roller. The Subaru should get power to that rear side right away because the other big difference here is this is a full-time all-wheel drive system. The Subaru is always driving all four wheels. So it should get power there pretty quickly, and then when it realizes it's slipping, it'll route more power to the rear, and it should come off these rollers pretty quickly, but that's why we have this test set up. We're gonna get in and drive it now. We'll see how long it takes for the Subaru to figure out all the slip, and then for it to jump off these rollers. Uh, I'm not going to put any of the special modes on. We have X mode here. We have snow and dirt, deep snow and mud, none of that. We just want to see what these systems do in totally normal mode because that's where I think, you know, most of the time they're going to be driven. So uh, all I'm going to do is put it in drive. I'm not going to floor it. I'm going to gently kind of pour on the accelerator. And like I said, we'll see how long it takes to uh, come off the rollers. And uh, here we go. Ready, Matt? Okay, accelerating in three, two, one. <laughs> well, it wasn't confused at all. As I rolled on the power, it just rolled right off. I didn't feel any slip whatsoever. And I think the whole deal there is, again, this is full-time all-wheel drive. That rear tire is always getting power, so it didn't need to slip and then send the power like the Toyota does. So now let's go put that thing up on the rollers and see if it's any different. Now let's dive into the Highlander. So this is Toyota's dynamic torque vectoring all-wheel drive setup. And this is honestly what you're going to find in the majority of front-wheel drive-based all-wheel drive setups. This is very similar to what a lot of brands use. Now, like I mentioned, it's front-wheel drive base, so the engine up there is transverse mounted, and then it sends its power to the back. And that also means that, no, this system will not be symmetrical like Subaru's, and Subaru uses a longitudinally mounted engine, and that's one of the things that makes that possible. At the rear, there are two electromagnetic clutches, and each one of them controls one of those rear wheels. So unlike a lot of systems, even like the Subaru, that sends the power to an open differential, the Toyota actually can split power individually on these rear wheels back here. Another thing the Toyota does that the Subaru doesn't do, it will fully disconnect its drive shaft also using a clutch. So when you're cruising down the highway on a dry day, it's fully front wheel drive. Now the reason why you'd want that is because of fuel economy. If you're not turning that drive shaft and turning extra wheels, you're gonna save fuel. So Toyota decided that's the way to go, make it even more efficient. However, the downside there is unlike the Subaru that's full-time all-wheel drive, the Toyota 
Toyota has to actually sense some slip to then engage those rear wheels. So we're going to see what that looks like in the real world on the rollers, but it should take the Toyota a little more time to sort out what's going on and then send the power. Let's see if that's true. Here we go. Toyota Highlander slip test. Let's see what happens. Oh, there's the power. There's that clutch engaging. And there we go. Well, folks, it was pretty much exactly what I expected. You saw the front wheels start to slip first, and then I could actually feel in the vehicle the power suddenly being sent to the back, that drive shaft and that clutch engaging, and then we were off the rollers. If I had floored it, it might have happened a little bit quicker, but still, that's the difference between an all-time all-wheel drive setup like the Subaru and a setup like that in the Toyota that has to actually sense the slip and then react to it. So what's the verdict on the all-wheel drive systems? Well, I think you saw the difference pretty clearly. If all-wheel drive control is your priority, the Subaru is a little bit better, frankly, just because it's always working for you. It doesn't need to react to a situation. It is prepared for the situation. Unlike the Toyota over here, which yes, it's a reactive system. It has to actually have some slip for it to then send the power. Or I could have put it into a drive mode over here that would have sent the power sooner. But once again, this was all about just testing them on a normal day. So yeah, all wheel drive, I think that's a check mark for the Subaru. However, that means it's gonna be a little bit more thirsty as well. So why don't we hit the road now and we'll talk about things like the fuel economy, the drive, and how much space is inside these big things. Now let's dive into what might be the most important thing with these vehicles, the rear seat space. So here in our Highlander, you can get an eight seater. We just have the seven seater, which means we have captain shares here in the second row. I wanna point out the captain shares have lower latch and they have top tethers, but in the third row, there's no lower latch anchors and there's only one top tether in the center position. That's important for kid seats. You can see I've got my monster rear facing child seat over here. What's nice is how adjustable these seats are, if I can reach it from there. So you can really move it forward and back. When this is all the way back, it does not affect my driving position. And I'm a big guy, so that's important for me. I can have that seat behind me and not have to really move around to accommodate it. Finally, let me climb in. This is 41 inches of second row leg room, and it's a ton. I have enough knee room, my knees aren't too high, I have enough headroom, there is a hump here, but actually even with the hump, I have just enough. So, you know what, as the second rows go, this is pretty good. Couple amenities I'll mention, I do have the sunshade, again, very important when you have small kids, especially in a rear facing seat like this. I do get HVAC controls down here, and there's two USB ports here in the second row. Now I'm gonna climb in the third row, and it might be comical, because it's pretty small back there. So this is just 27.7 inches of third row legroom. And I stand at 6'2", over 300 pounds. I am not small. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> okay, I'm in. <laughs> this is horrible. I have no headroom. I have no knee room. The floor comes up really high, so my knees are way up here in my chest. This right now is, is explaining to me why the brand new Toyota Grand Highlander exists. And that's because the third row in the Grand Highlander is much bigger than this one. So here in the Highlander, third row is really just for kids, maybe a teenager in a pinch, but honestly, you only probably want to put kids back here or people you don't like. And now let's see if I can somehow jam my way out of here. Nope, not that way, but first. <laughs> and I'm free. All right, now let's take a look at the Subaru Ascent. And the first thing I have to tell you about, once again, is the child seat situation. So we also have captain seats here in the Ascent. They both have lower latch and the top tether, but the third row of the Subaru is straight up better for kids. It has one lower latch position and it has three top tethers. So you can put a forward facing child seat anywhere across the backpack there. So if just installing the most amount of child seats is your priority, once again, the Subaru is actually better. So here in the second row, we have just under 39 inches of legroom. So not as much as the Toyota. Although again, in real world, 
feels like plenty. I have enough knee room. My knees aren't too tall. I do have this panoramic sunroof, but even over here on the side, I actually have just enough headroom. That's pretty decent. I appreciate that. And then just a load of adjustability in this seat as well. The Toyota had that too, but I always really appreciate that these days that the second rows are so adjustable. Now for amenities, we have the sunshades too, love those. We do get HVAC controls, we get a USB-A and a USB-C, but one thing we have in the Subaru the Toyota didn't have is an actual three-prong plug, plus a couple cup holders down there that fall to the floor. So the amenities here in the Subaru are a little better, and now let's climb into the third row. Let's climb in right now. So like I said, Subaru decided they wanted a little more third row legroom and a little less second. This is 32 inches of third row. And, well, it's a little small too. The headroom for me is always an issue in these third rows. I absolutely don't have enough. My knees are actually not quite as tall as in the Toyota. And of course this seat could be adjusted a little bit to help me. But even in this third row, I'm gonna tell you it's a hair bigger than the Highlander, but probably still best reserved for children. Now one thing I noticed though too, you do get some amenities back here. I actually have my own USB ports over here on my right, plus my own little storage bin, which I didn't have in the Highlander. So third rows, the Subaru is a hair better, but it's still not quite good enough for a full-size adult. Now those push forward like so, and out I go. Actually a little easier to get in and out of the Subaru as well. And now folks, here we are driving in this Toyota Highlander XSE all-wheel drive. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is just the trim discrepancy because this isn't a perfect comparison today. And actually, Matt, the trims aren't right there, but the prices are. So this is an XSE. This is a mid trim for the Highlander. And this is the sporty trim. This is the trim you buy to make the vehicle actually drive a little bit more uh, aggressively, take corners a little better, and look a little bit sharper. On the flip side, we have the Subaru Ascent Premier. That's the top trim of the Ascent. That thing is all about being fully luxurious. But you know, the interesting part, Matt, is the prices. So here in the Toyota, we're talking about over $52,000 Canadian. Over there in the Subaru, it's over $53,000 Canadian. So the prices are actually right there. Now, if you were to get a fully loaded Highlander, you're talking about $60,000 Canadian. So That's the Toyotas... Yeah, the, the Highlander is just straight up more expensive than the Subaru as you move through the trim walk. So the fact that we don't have the same trims today is kind of offset by the fact that our price comparison is so close. So the prices are right there. Uh, the other thing that's right there are the powertrains. These are both 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engines. So you can't get more similar than that. Of course, here in the Toyota, it's an eight speed. The Subaru is a CVT. Uh, but now I will toss to you You've been driving the Subaru all week. Now you're in the Toyota. What do you feel here in the Highlander? How is the powertrain? And most importantly, does the XSE make a difference? Does it actually feel sporty to you? Um, well, the first thing, when I opened the door and I saw the lovely red leather seats, I went, oh. It is a nice looking interior. Red leather seats. I, I always love when Toyota puts these seats in everything. It's not new, but it, that's the first thing that jumped out at me. Don't get me wrong, the Subaru interior is quite nice. The brown leather wood accents, everything else they got going on, but I would take this interior in a heartbeat for sure. In terms of driving feel, right away, the Toyota felt heavier to me. And I, I don't know if I'm just perceiving it, but it just didn't seem to take off as quickly. Uh, the transmission seemed to kind of, like right here, you can feel if I put my foot down, takes a second yeah. to kind of look for a gear. Now, I'm not saying I'm, 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 I'm the biggest fan of a CVT transmission. However, th this one, it just seems to hunt a little bit and it just doesn't have that same grab that the Subaru has. Um, on the flip side though, fuel economy wise, I feel like with an eight speed transmission, turbo four, this thing is going to be killing that Subaru. So that is a three mile per gallon difference between these two vehicles and over time that's absolutely that's quite significant. Add up. So so we showed the difference in the all-wheel drive and how they actually work. Uh, so this is a question that you have to ask yourself. Would you rather have that instant all-wheel drive response that the Subaru provides, or would you rather have the long-term fuel savings that you know you're gonna get out of the Toyota? And that's not a question I can answer for you, but I'm happy we were able to kind of show that off. So now if you are looking at these two, you can you know make that decision for yourself. Well, Matt, just before we jump over into the Ascent, 
let's just look at the features again because these aren't the right trims but the prices are right there so I want to see what the differences are and I actually do feel like the Toyota is pretty well contented for where it lands in the trim walk uh, we do have wireless phone charging we do have all those drive modes down there two USB-C ports and one USB-A up front uh, you do have the nice big digital screen in between your gauges pretty nice big touch screen as well uh, we don't have panoramic sunroof but we do have a regular size sunroof Standard up sunroof, here yep. uh, leatherette seating stitching the red stitching in the dash um, yeah, you know what, like I said, we'll have to go in the Ascent and see sort of what's missing or, or what's there that isn't here, but I feel pretty good about this at the price point. It's a well-optioned package for sure, and I mean, it, it'll, almost, it'll almost show poorly on the Subaru if it doesn't have the same stuff as a mid-trim competitor Yeah, absolutely. at that price point. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, yeah, I think with that being said, I think we should jump over there now and uh, let's take a look. For sure. And now here we are in the Ascent. And again, the first thing we'll go over is just some of the features because this vehicle is a fully loaded Ascent. And yet we have some things the Toyota doesn't have and still the Toyota has some things this doesn't. And the one I'm really noticing is wireless phone charging. The Toyota has it and this Ascent does not, which is uh, a little bit surprising yeah, for a top trim vehicle. Yeah. Now on the flip side, we do have a rear camera mirror, which is pretty nice. The Toyota does not have that. Um, these systems take getting used to, Matt, but I will admit that while I didn't love it at first, I've been in enough of them now, I do like it, I almost always leave it on. You do get used to it and you just, you get a bit of a wider uh, field of vision than you normally do with the mirror, so I'm okay with it. I especially love being able to zoom in and stare at the people behind you. <laughs> at a red light, <laughs> you can see what they're doing. Um, massive sunroof, so if a panoramic sunroof is important to you, we do have it here in the Subaru and the Toyota doesn't. Now we do have adaptive cruise in both of these vehicles with lane keep assist, but there is a difference and that is Subaru's eyesight system. It actually monitors the driver, so it is scanning my eyeballs to make sure I'm paying attention and I won't test it for you now, but we did test it in the safest way possible and I looked away from the road while Matt paid attention and yeah, in about, I don't know, five seconds maybe a little message pops up and it says pay attention to the road so that's a neat bit of technology that's one extra kind of layer of safety right and uh, a couple brands have that eye monitoring thing but it's not too common yet and that is here in the Subaru thing. now I don't know man outside of that everything is pretty similar I will say this feels like it's going for an upscale luxury feel where that Toyota felt like it's going for like a cool kind of hip Sporty luxury market. feel. Yeah. yeah, so it's a different kind of feel. Yeah. Um, but this is nice too. I, I have no complaints. Uh, yeah. The screen is nice, yeah. nice looking. Larger, I believe a larger screen than the Toyota. Definitely larger. Tall wise. Uh, down here you do get your USB-C, one USB-C-A, or pardon me, USB-A and a, an auxiliary port, which I thought had all gone the way of the Dodo, but there's yeah. one right there, which is cool. That is interesting, right? It was almost like CD players for a while. Yeah. It was such an uh, anomaly to see a CD player. Now and it's then, weird uh, to see an aux. In addition to the heated seats, we do get the ventilated seats over here as well that there's you don't another get in the Toyota. One. So comfort-wise and everything else, I liked everything the way it's laid out in here. Yeah. That's what I kept finding myself saying all week. I like where everything is, all the placement of everything. It's comfortable and it looks nice too. They're nice silver accents, wood trim, leather trim, but like you said, more of that plush, upscale, refined, I dare say. Sure, and you know what? When you talk about comfort, oh, we yeah. cannot forget the thigh bolster. I love these. I don't know why more brands don't use them. It's just this little slidable cushion that's kind of right there underneath your thigh. It comes out and it just gives you more leg support. And where I notice this mat is over a long drive, if you have a seat that's a little too yep. short, your legs get a little sore because you're kind of supporting the weight of them, right? Whereas with the thigh bolster, it's doing a nice job. Uh, so yeah, overall kind of comfort in the interior, I will say the Subaru uh, is a little bit better. I think. Yeah, overall, I mean, I think this is a win for Subaru. 
Yeah, you know what? I kind of feel that way too. I mean, the Highlander did a lot of things well, but it just Subaru did everything a little bit better. And then again, when you look at the price points, yeah, you know what? The Subaru is offering quite a bit of value, whereas the Toyota starts to feel a little bit expensive. And then in all the testing we did today, the only thing the Toyota was better at was fuel economy. So again, if that's really a priority. And wireless charging. And wireless charging, fair <laughs> enough. So yeah, if, if those things really matter to you, fine. But overall, I lean the same way, Matt. Between these two, as they sit, I'd go for the Subaru, especially here in Canada where we're dealing with sloppy winter weather for many months out of the year. So guys, that's it for this one. But now, of course, we need to hear from you. Go in the comments. Let us know, first of all, what you think of symmetrical all-wheel drive versus Toyota's system. And then tell us what you think about these vehicles. And as always, while you're down below, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of Truck King, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're up to next. See ya.